the challenge that I had was I had no idea how to hire for salespeople. I knew how to hire for technical people. For technical, yeah. But for salespeople, I didn't know. Um, but, but I mean, it's, it's something that um, not just sales in, in any field mm-hmm. in your business, you know, you, yeah. you have a particular skill that you're great at, mm-hmm. but a business needs multiple skills and you mm-hmm. most, it's very rare that you have all of those skills. So all at some skills. point you're hiring yeah. for someone mm-hmm. that you're not an expert in. You know, uh, this is a question of, yes, you want to increase sales, right? But do you, do you? Get the get, do you get that resource in before you get the, the, the piece of work, or or do you do you go sit on the fence, get the piece of work, and then go out to scalper to try and and, and, and and then get the right resource to fit the the, the piece of work or, or contract that that that, that you have. Uh, it's a it's a it's a common question that a lot of that a lot of uh, clients obviously have. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so, so you I, increase your, your, your stuff mm, yeah, first yeah. before chicken or egg? Um, <laughs> so, uh, look, hiring people is, like we, we discussed before, can be uh, a, risky, a risky part of your business, mm. probably the most risky part of your business. You hire the wrong person, like it can be, it have devastating effects uh, on your overall bottom line, on the morale of the rest of your team if you have an existing team. But if you're new to hiring, what I normally advise people to do is if you're a solo entrepreneur or you you're going in for your first hire or your second hire uh, it's generally safer to look at your portfolio of work because hiring someone is supposed to make your work your experience better and um and so you i'd look at all the stuff that you do so so um you know, you, you write down a list. This is my day to day, my week, whatever I need to do in terms of uh, making sure that I get this revenue because that's kind of what it's about to get this revenue. And so then you, you look at the stuff that you enjoy the least or that you feel it makes the, the least contribution to that overall delivery. For an example, I mean, HR is a good example. In both of our businesses, we outsource our HR. Um, I don't know enough about HR. I don't want to learn Great. about HR. Yeah. It sounds like a lot mm-hmm. of admin to me. And to me, mm-hmm. admin is like a gun to my head. No, thank you. I will not have yeah. it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so those are the kind of things we look at. You say, cool, I can either get a virtual assistant, which is um, an option these days. Somebody is good at some sort of administrative function that can be performed remotely with a set of instructions. So. You process the journal entries, for example. Here's the things, go for it. Like, and they just process. And, mm. and so that's what I'd look at. I'd look at the, the job function of you first, what you love doing. If you love you know, having your, yourself deep in the admin, then go hire someone to do the other stuff, like marketing or social media, if you don't like social media, stuff like that. Um, you know, so it is. It is really, but thinking about yourself, splitting the, you know, the, the 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 daily tasks that you have, and then taking those tasks that you enjoy the least. Find someone who loves those things and hire them, right? Because that will give you more freedom to focus on the other things more. So you'd have more time to focus mm-hmm. on that other things because mm-hmm. I believe in focusing on your strength. So you'd be actually you'd be like greater, you know. But it's got to be task that is clearly defined. Otherwise, a mistake that I've made, I hired people with an idea. And that's a dead mistake. Like, um, you know, like, oh, come work with me. You're a great person. You seem to have lots of great ideas, you know. Uh, And they come on board and then they don't know what to do. I don't know what to give them to do. I thought they'd figured it out. They um, thought yeah. I knew it and we sort of mm. butt heads and that mm. isn't healthy for anyone. You know, they feel terrible, I feel terrible um, and you part ways on, you know, unfriendly terms. Uh, mm. So be clear about what you want someone to do. Tell them, this is what I expect you to do. Um, and this is the job involved. This is the goal of what it is that you're doing. If you can't do that, then you shouldn't be hiring. So that's the first yeah. rule. Uh, yeah, think. good point. 
you know, is you have to be able to write down what's their goals, uh, almost like, you know, not to do it as an HR thing, but um, let's say it's something like this. I'm going to hire you to edit videos for me. So, and I want the videos to be 25 minutes long with an intro and an outro and some cool animation. Each one of them, you've got to stack it up like that. And you've got to get the highlight and, and write down the, the key points of, of each of the, the videos so that it becomes show notes. And that's what I want. And I want you to do it for, fif I've got 15 recordings that I need you to do it for. So that's something that I can, you be able yeah. to hire mm -hmm. someone for clear mm -hmm. scope, either, mm -hmm. either be some, a consultant, a contractor, or you in-house that person or whatever it is, you've got to look at your affordability of I'm going to take this revenue, this money I have in the bank, I'm going to give it to this resource because if I give them that, it's going to give me this other return. Hey, thanks so much for watching that video. I hope that you got some value out of that. I thought I'd just round this off with a few points that I found very really useful when I was making my first hire. If you're a small business, micro business, a solo entrepreneur, and you're trying to find the direction for what you should be looking out for when hiring your first person, uh, whether that be a virtual assistant, whether it be a contractor, I found that this really helped me when I was making my decision. So number one is what I've said in this video is take the task that you find that you struggle with the most, that takes up a lot of time, but they really, they seem like they're small things, but you take a while to get to it. You, you're always delaying it. You're not sort of making it a priority. Take those things, look at those things, and then maybe try and put that into a, into a function. So somebody, a collection of things that somebody can do, and that's who you hire. You hire someone to do those things. Mentally, it frees you from that, and it's a lot easier for you then to focus on the things that you actually like doing which ultimately will lead to more productivity in your business. That's fantastic. That's tip number one. And then tip number two is if you are hiring someone that is a little bit more technically involved in the business, try and make sure that you're getting the money right. This is very difficult to do. It's not impossible, but it just means that our tendency as business owners uh, is that we are trying to use the least amount of money and get the best value out of it. I think that's as humans, that's what we do. But if you... If you, if you get it wrong on either scale, so you the money is too cheap, but you want to hire a skill, you probably won't find someone. Or if you do find someone, they're not at the caliber that you are expecting. So that will be different. So make sure that you get the money right when you do go out to market. Keep those two points close when making your decision. I wish you all the best. Uh, if you do want to reach out to me and have a little bit more of a conversation, I do have links in the description below that you can click on and reach out uh, and we can start that process of us having a conversation. All the best with your business and I wish you luck.